Lads, 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 well I know this has been spoken for quite a while, but I honestly didn't expect Jack Rodwell to be up to Chris Wilder's standards. But he is, and here we go, Jack Rodwell is officially a Blade. So Sheffield United have made their first signing of the January transfer window and it's one of them signings again. You know the ones, the ones where Chris Wilder tries to spice things up. Leon Clark, Gary Medine, Ravel Morrison, need I go on? Now he was on trial before like Ravel Morrison was. Now we've had one very very good trialist and very good business in recent times. Obviously Mr David McGoldrick. And this year Ravel's come through a trial as well, but he's not had as much game time as what probably he expected and we expected. And now my friends, we have Jack Rodwell. However, now we've signed him, I bet he's so glad that Sunderland got knocked out of FA Cup quite early. Could you imagine him going back to the stadium alive? He won't get out alive. So I'll go through the stats and then the pros and the cons. So his stats, he's 28 years old, he's 6 foot 2 inches tall, he played 85 times for Everton scoring 4 goals before leaving to go to Man City. And they did sign him for £12 million so back in them days £12 million for Man City was quite a decent chunk of money. But he only choked up 16 appearances in two years for City. That was mostly to do with injuries though. Then Man City cut the losses and sold him for 10 million to Sunderland. The worst mistake Sunderland's ever made. He played 67 times for Sunderland, scoring five goals. But I don't know how many of them were in the Prem, but I bet at least 90% were in the Prem. Because he did not want to play in any other division. And he was reportedly on 70 grand a week. And when Sunderland were relegated for the second year in a row, the chairman actually asked Jack Rodwell to leave. He said, be a man and leave. But he said no and carried on picking up his pay packet. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying Rodwell's done anything wrong because it was Sunderland's idea to put him on that contract in the first place for that amount of money and that many years. And it's fine, it's fine when you're injured and you can't play and you're on a big contract. Fair enough, there's not much you can do about that. You're not going to say, yeah, I'll leave the club because no one's going to sign you when you're injured. However, Rodwell was injured for parts of his Sunderland career. But I think some of them he may have been uh, telling porkies. Because I did watch that Sunderland Till I Die documentary and uh, he didn't come off well. Also when he was at Sunderland he still holds the record to this day of the most consecutive defeats in a row in the Premier League. 39. Let's just hope he's not a jinx. But he did eventually agree to leave the club in August 2018. He then signed for Blackburn Rovers on a one year deal and after reading Panchero's post about what the Blackburn fans are saying about Rodwell, it looked like he did really well and they didn't want him to leave. Which is a bit of change of pace from the Sunderland fans. Jack Rodwell has finally left the club. The absolute thief. However, from what I've read, it seems like Blackburn Rovers offered him a contract, but he didn't take it. I did read that it was because he wasn't guaranteed first-team football, but if Blackburn fans are saying he's playing really well, he'll probably get first-team football anyway. So maybe it was because the length of the contract or, or how much they were paying him, but really, who's going to give him a lengthy contract after what he did at Sunderland? So here we go. Here are my thoughts. Let's start with the positives first. I think it's a win-win situation. We'll be paying him next to nothing until he proves himself and he's only really got a few months until the end of the season to prove himself and in a lot of the comments from Blackburn fans they were saying he was too good for Blackburn which is surely a good thing step up from the championship is the premiership another thing is he can play many different roles so he can play centre midfield where Fleck and Lunny play maybe he's not going to be one of them that's going to be up, down, up, down, but he can play that role if we're kind of look, we're playing a really good team and, uh, and we're not flying forward every two seconds. He can also play centre defensive midfield where Norwood plays and I think Wilder recently has mentioned about trying to replace Norwood. Whether that was the right decision to say that or not is, is uh, not my place to say, but it looks like Rodwell can play centre defensive midfield. So sitting in front of the defence, breaking up play, playing out to kind of Fleck, Lunny, uh, Freeman, uh, Ravel even maybe. Um, so he can play that position as well. And finally, and I think this is the one that probably Wilder thinks he fits in the most because it's very hard to find overlapping centre-backs. It just is. Um, so we've got one overlapping centre-back 
who was a central defender but also could play left back. And then we've got a, uh, an original centre midfielder that got made into a centre back that, that obviously can play football. So there are two overlapping centre backs. And we haven't really got anyone else at the club that can do that role. So Jack Rodwell be, uh, used to play centre back uh, when he very first started his career. And after watching Jack Rodwell's first interview, he did say that he used to play centre back when he very, very first started his career. And then Everton moved him into central midfield. So he can do both roles. And I think he's perfect for that role, absolutely perfect. And it probably would be Basham that would be, uh, would be making way because he's right footed. I know I said finally, but maybe he can play the Egan role as well. Who knows? Like, if Egan gets injured, maybe we'd rather play Rodwell there. Um, Jack could probably play there as well, but obviously he's left footed and he's, he's great in that role. Maybe he could play Rodwell right in that middle. We've obviously got Jags, we've obviously got Stearman as well, but. Jags is getting on a bit and uh, Rodwell is still only 28. And that brings me on to my next positive. He's only 28. It feels like he's been around for about 20 years already. But obviously he came through the ranks at Everton quite early on. And technically, with him being 28, if he impresses, we could have him for another five or six years. That's that's the thing, when when people slow down like your Ryan Giggs and your Becks and people like that, they sometimes come inside and they play in central midfield. You don't necessarily have to be a 24, 25, 26 year old to play centre midfield. You can sit in the middle and, and just conduct play. And yeah, at, at 33, 34 years old, it's still possible. And my final positive is, it looks like he wants to be here. I'm absolutely buzzing here. I've been training there the last few weeks now. Seemed like a great set of lads, great um, staff seemed brilliant. So I'm really happy to get it finally over the line. Like, don't get me wrong, 99% of players, when they first do an interview for the club, are like, oh, I'm buzzing, I'm buzzing, I can't wait to get started, oh, the crowd's great, and blah, blah, blah. Well, everyone except Leon Clark. No, re uh, really happy. Um, when I knew the opportunity, there was an opportunity to come back to Chef to come to Sheffield United. I jumped at the opportunity, to be honest with you. Um. And finally now, the negatives. He's got a lot of haters. He's got a lot of baggage. I'll tell you what, when I watched that Sunderland documentary, I hated him. I absolutely despise the man, and I see why Sunderland fans hate him. Now the feeling is slightly bittersweet because, yeah, it's fantastic that he's left, but if we think about it, we signed him for 10 million, he's been with us for 1,422 days, he's estimated to have earned 14.2 million pounds in his wages since he's been at the club, which totals to 24.2 million in general that we've spent on Jack Rodwell, so who's really the winner? And after watching it, it, it just didn't sit right with me. And when I saw that we were interested in signing him, I'm like, I don't like this. And don't get me wrong, uh, we've signed a lot of players that I think could rock the boat. Leon Clark, Gary Medine, Ravel Morrison, as I've just said. So I know, the, I know the boat's not gonna be rocked. I know that Wilder will just kick him out if they're causing problems. I can't see him causing problems, he's got like, we've got nothing to lose, he's got everything to lose. This could be one of his last chances, especially in the Premier League. The reason why I'm really annoyed about the Sunderland documentary and stuff is because, remember when Dean Hammond signed for us uh, when we didn't want him to um, and kind of robbed the club of money because obviously Wilder then had to get rid of him and pay him off. Jack Rodwell did 100 times worse than what Dean Hammond did. And you know how much we hate Dean Hammond, so... Jack Rodwell is really, really going to have to do some work. Anyway, hopefully he doesn't have attitude problems like he had at Sunderland. It seemed like he really got stuck in at Blackburn, and uh, and that was in the Championship where he didn't want to play. So now he's in the Premiership, I think he's going to be doing everything possible to make sure he stays in the Premier League. So again, Wilder with a masterstroke. He brings players in where we've got absolutely nothing to lose, and we've got everything to gain. He just likes hungry players. And I love that about him. And whatever he's doing in the past is in the past. As long as he's wearing those red and white stripes and that Sheffield United badge on his chest, I will be supporting Jack Rodwell. So fingers crossed we see more of him than Ravel Morrison. And all I can say is good luck, Jack. Players on trial and they're working out. I'm assuming you're, you're wanting some of that. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, I got the phone call and said, you know, would you... Would you come and trial at uh, Chef United? And of course, you know it's, a, it's an honour for me to do that. So thankful of the opportunity. Uh, you know it's up to me now to um, to do the business, and hopefully we can get some good wins on the board.